We need to make $1,000 very quickly. Let me explain. I was driving to lunch with my mom when a pebble cracked my windshield. My mom's like, oh my God. The transition of my car is about to kick the chair. My brakes need to be replaced. And to add to that, now I'm one windstorm away from never seeing again. I sat there and I was like, gee golly, I really don't want to pay for any of this out of pocket. So I came up with an idea. They say poker is a hard way to make an easy living, but today it's going to be an easy way to fix a windshield. <laughs> We're going to go to the casino. I'm assuming the cost of all the things is going to be like a thousand dollars. And the issue is we only have an hour to do it. The auto body shop closes at eight, the Miami Heat play at nine, and it's currently 530. So we should probably just like get a move on here. Dude, what's going on with my car? My car is broken. Um, add a busted battery. Add busted battery to the things of the things that we don't, that's not working. I'm gonna take my mom's car. Mom, can I have your car? Your car? Your car. All right, let's try this again with a car that actually works. Perfect. I'm gonna grab dinner first, but we're gonna go to Manchester. Yeah, yeah. We have some things to catch up on, by the way. My last video, I got some mixed reviews. People thought I was calling out vloggers. I wasn't. I was just pointing out the flaws fundamentally with vlogging. It just misses the whole picture. I'm not gonna go into it again. I just wanted to reiterate that I wasn't calling anyone out and I actually do support and appreciate all the work that these people do. That I feel like is important to mention. Just absolutely piss slap this acai bowl for dinner. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to go play poker. This might sound a little weird, but I've been sleeping on the floor. Literally, like, on the, on the I, carpet. Marcus Aurelius was the Roman emperor back way before I was... <laughs> one of his... Meditative exercises? He slept on the fucking floor. His mom would walk into his room when he was, like, 12 years old, and she'd be like... Marcus, what are you doing? Get on the bed. And he's like... All right, mom. Fast forward to his adult life, he would often find himself sleeping on the floor just to remind himself of all of the luxuries of life that he was afforded. All of those could be stripped away at any moment. And I thought that was... Okay, bitches on TikTok, they need to be humbled, but I'm gonna humble myself by sleeping on the floor. You know what I mean? It's an act of gratitude. I'm acutely aware of how much time that I waste in a day. That's like my biggest thing that I'm really not happy with at the moment. Long-winded explanation. I'm sick and tired of wasting time and I've been sleeping on the floor. How does that help? I don't know, but we're grateful for what we have. What does Snoop Dogg and my vocal cords have in common? They're both f***ing fried. I have a, oh my God. I have a cold right now. I apologize in advance for my voice, but if Kanye West can record a hit record with a wire in his mouth, I can record a voiceover with phlegm in my throat. I don't give a fuck. We pull up to Manchester and buy another 2-5 game for $1,500. The timer starts now. First shuffle, I'm not even kidding, we pick up a missile. I'm joking, it's dog shit, we fold. This combination of cards should be illegal. So should this. Now there's a dealer change. Woohoo! Every time there's a dealer change, PLO bomb pot. We go off to a flop and we drill the stone cold nuts. That is a great start. I'm obviously gonna bet if action checks to me, but even better, the hijack decides to pot it for $80. The cutoff folds, and when action's on me... I'm re-recording this voiceover four days later. I sound like a serial chain smoker. Like, I apologize that I sound like I've been inhaling Newport since the 1960s. Potlum at Omaha has the temperament of a cat. One minute you have the nuts, the next it's bitch slapping you and you're drawing dead. So, even though we have the best hand right now, there's a lot of runouts that we won't love, such as any board pair. And for all we know, the hijack has... He could also have queen 10 with a better draw, such as two pair or a set. Then we would get free rolled. That's a catastrophe. I'm aware that we have backdoor diamonds, but there's just... It seems like we could actually have better hands in this spot, believe it or not. If other fish meander into this pot, then perhaps we can split their money. I decide to flick in the call. Unfortunately, everyone else gets out of the way. We go heads up to a turn card, which pairs the board. And even worse, the hijack continues betting, this time for $200. <sighs>
Dude, we could be drawing stone dead. I want no part of this hand. Get me out of here. Dude, we only have 50 minutes to make $1,000. We're already going the wrong direction. And it's not going to get any better when we look down at sh like this. Dealer, do something about this, please. Then we look down at king-queen offshoot in the cutoff. There's a button straddle on and two players limp to me. I'm going to be doing no such thing holding literal royalty. So I make it $60 and only the second limper makes the call. Heads up to a flop of... 10-4 deuce all hearts. He checks, I'm an asshole, so I don't, and he folds. The next three hands can be described as such. Jack diddly squat. Then history decides to repeat itself. This time we're in early position. Under the gun limps, and I isolate to $30. The hijack calls, and everyone else folds. Heads up to a flop of queen nine seven. Top pair, good kicker, seems pretty good. I start with $50 and the hijack makes the call. Going off to a turn card, which peels off the literal worst card in the deck. That's pretty great. Um, a lot of hands that the hijack calls flop with now improve, like jack 10, 9, 8, 6, 5, even 8, 7, queen 10, queen jack, pick up gutters. It's like, this is such a bad card. Plus, I don't think I'm getting three streets of value from worse, and if I bet and get raised, I'm in shambles. So let's like, let's make life simple and just... The hijack checks it right back, which I am more than okay with. Going off to see one last card, which peels off the three of spades. Seems to be a brick. Backdoor flush draw comes in, but can't be scared about monsters under the bed. I think you'd be betting all the straight sets and two pairs on the turn. So considering he checked, it indicates some form of showdown value, and I'm feeling a lot more comfortable with my hand. By placing a bet here, I'm really targeting like queen jack, queen ten, maybe an unbelieving nine, like ace nine. I don't expect to get raised as a bluff because this is 2-5, not poker stars. I bet $100 and immediately get raised to 450 <laughs> Now I kind of want to punch myself in the throat. River spots are so under bluffed, and if he was bluffing, why didn't he just bet the turn? This is kind of an annoying spot, but I just decided to let it go. The hijack is kind enough to show for the vlog. He had 7-5 of spades. My sexual orientation is straight, so I'm really not comfortable with any backdoor activity, and this definitely qualifies. I'm really not enjoying this. Now we look down at a suited king in the big blind. Under the gun raises to 20, like four people call. We're getting insane odds to play the lottery, so I stick in the extra 15. We go off to a flop of butt cheeks. Action checks around. Turn is nothing relevant. When someone bets, I get the hell out of that. Now we look down at ace five in the small blind. The straddle's on, and the cutoff limps. I'll be the first to say it. This should just be a fold. This is really not a good hand. I raised to $50. Only the cutoff makes the call. This guy is 87 years old, so that's an important thing to note. Going off to a flop of queen ten, king 10, 7. Let's, uh, in this modern day of feminism, let's let the man shine a little bit, you know? This is a good board for my range, so I start throwing money in the middle. And unfortunately, the cutoff doesn't let it go quite yet. Going off to a turn card, which peels in uh, another diamond. Listen, I'm an aggressive monkey, so I'm just going to keep betting and hope to God he folds whatever he has. This time I throw out $150, and now the cutoff does something really interesting. He puts in a min raise to $300. Now, I know what you're thinking. Corey, you have ace high, you have no draws. Like, the only thing you're drawing is dead. Let's just fold. Now, I don't blame you, but uh, hear me out, though. At this point, I think it's pretty clear that he's a king. He's never raising turn in position with a hand like queen, jack, eight, seven, or a flush draw. And it's pretty hard to make a set. Additionally, he'd probably just raise kings and tens and sevens himself. So kind of feels like he is king nine, something like that. This min raise feels like he's trying to take the betting lead so that he has the opportunity to check back river and get a cheap showdown. With that being said... We only have to call 150 to win a really big pot. Now you might be like, Corey, win the pot. You have ace high. What are you talking about? Uh, yep, that's true. But there's still one card to come, though. If it happens to be a heart, we have the ace of hearts. And like we mentioned, I think this guy is a king. There's $900 left behind. If a heart peels off on the river, I am going to represent the nut flush. I think it's a perfect opportunity to steal it away. I'm going to blast off. I make the call. Going off to see one last card. Give me a heart. One time. One time. 
River peels off. An offsuit king. I'm in shambles. I haven't even acted yet, and this guy excitedly bets $200 out of turn. I look at him like, dude, I haven't even... He's like, oh, my bad. I'm sorry. Teehee. And I was like, God Sure enough, the cutoff flips over king-queen offsuit. I hate myself. Now we are on the button, and I do not make it to the flop. Now we look down at the same catastrophe, which should still be a fold. The hijack limps, and I still hate money. The button calls, and the hijack does as well. Three ways to a flop of literally nothing. I'm not putting a single dollar in this pot. Action checks around. We go off to a turn card, and for some reason, I put money in the pot. The button calls. I hijack folds, go off to a river. I check fold. Literally just lit $60 on fire for no good reason. I'm tilted out of my mind, so I decide to rip into a cow and add $600 to my stack. All we need is one double. That's it. Foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. With seven minutes left, we look down at ace nine of hearts in early position. Under the gun limps, I bump it up to 30. The low jack, high jack, button, big boy, every... This is a family reunion, and the flop is a disaster. Two people end up going all in, and I'm all out. Then we look down at king five offsuit, five four off, and that is the end of the hour. However, we went to the bathroom and ate a burger, so technically we didn't play for the full hour. We're going to add 15 minutes. I changed seats because the other one just simply was not doing it for me. Now we have queen jack offsuit under the gun. I open at $25 and only the middle position player makes the call. Heads up to a flop of ace four four with two club. We don't have a pair, we don't have the suit, everything's just not good. I check, which I would do quite often with a pair of aces as well. However, when the middle position player bets, I just swiftly get out of here. After all this time, trial and tribulation, boys, we finally pick <laughs> up a hand. Under the gun limps, the hijack raises to 20. I put in a three bet to $85. Only the hijack makes the call. Heads up to a flop of Queen Six Deuce Rainbow. I bet small, and in the hijack's mind, he's been watching a 12 year old light money on fire for the better part of an hour. For some reason, he doesn't believe that I have anything. Got off to a turn card, which peels off the Nine of Spades. Pretty much a brick, unless he has a hand like Pocket Nines. If I'm gonna bet when I have absolute dog piss, you better believe we're gonna keep betting when we have an overpair. I toss out $250. The hijack snap calls. <laughs> so we go off to witness one last card, which peels off the three of spades. The backdoor flush draw gets there, and we don't have a spade. However, how this hand's played out, I think it's quite likely that he has a hand like ace-queen. I don't think he's calling two streets with jacks, tens, eights, sevens, stuff like that. If he has a set, so be it, and I don't think this guy is one to float with a hand like backdoor spades. Considering there's a backdoor flush out there, I don't think he would call a jam, and he's 87 years old, so let's just keep it in the ballpark here. I toss out $500. The hijack immediately looks uncomfortable. He thinks, and thinks some more, then flicks in the chips. We flip it over, and he shows king queen of hearts. Thank the Lord Heavenly Father, we finally make a hand and get paid. Around this time, the timer officially ran out. We didn't make $1,000, but we also didn't go broke. We rack it up and go, oh, wait, no, we didn't. We actually stayed for an extra two and a half hours and dusted it all. Wow, that took a turn of it. That was a turn. Last video, I thought I played good. Today, we cannot say the same. I was really trying to give it away in this one. I have no idea why. I really wish sessions like this, because I could just write off. I, I wish I could write these sessions off. If I ever get a girlfriend and she asks what I do for a living, I'm just going to tell her I'm a philanthropist. Basically what I do on 50% of my sessions. I'm currently in Phoenix, Arizona, by the way. It's hot as balls out here. The pool closes in like 30 minutes, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go jump in the pool.